Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name is Hanson. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for this video, you find me sitting in the 2021 Lexus GX 460. And I wanna share with you my likes and dislikes about this luxury midsize SUV so that you have a better idea before you buy. And I also wanna share with you my thoughts as to why this GX, even at the starting price of $53,000, is a really good bargain. If you've been shopping for this, then you know how outdated this SUV really is. And if you're just finding that out now, let me show you how this is considered old. Now this platform has been around for more than a decade. It has received two facelifts, and while the exterior looks more modern, the interior looks pretty much the same as when it rolled off the showroom floor as a 2010 model. The infotainment is old, the features are dated, and all the performance figures, like the mileage, power, cargo capacity, are not something you'd expect while buying a 2021 model year vehicle. I'll go into all of that in more detail later, but I believe that buying the Lexus GX is a lot like buying old solid wood furniture. It may look old, it may not have the best functionality, and it may not be space efficient, but it's strong and it's going to last you a very long time. And once you're done with it, you can most likely pass it on to another person and it'll serve them very well also. And that's proven here because the GX has a robust mechanical design. And that makes this a very capable multi-terrain type of vehicle. It has the typical plush Lexus on-road feel and does really well off-road. The GX also has very good reliability ratings, decent maintenance costs, and the resale value is also very solid. What I like most about this SUV is what sets it apart from other mainstream SUVs, and that's the mechanical hardware. And given the amount of equipment and capability at this price range, the GX is priced really well. The GX is a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. That means that it has extra hardware, the transfer case, and that sends power to the front axle at all times. It's important to remember that four-wheel drive and all-wheel drive vehicles are not the same. Yes, all four wheels are getting power at the same time, but four-wheel drive vehicles are superior when it comes to off-roading because of that transfer case. Now, the transfer case is basically a torque multiplier, and usually it has a low-speed setting. What that means is that it's basically a two-speed transmission on top of your main transmission, and that'll reduce your speed, but multiply your torque by the same factor. As a result, four-wheel drive vehicles like this can put a lot of traction on the ground that it can climb things that normal all-wheel drive vehicles can't. I also like that this GX is a body-on-frame SUV, which means that it has great ground clearance for tackling those hard-to-reach destinations. Most new cars and SUVs are a unibody construction, and that means that the chassis and the body is a single structure. There's a lot of benefits to that. The GX is more like a truck or other old school SUVs based on trucks. This is how you get the high ground clearance at 8.1 inches and also why this midsize SUV is almost 5,200 pounds, whereas a unibody midsize SUV like the Acura MDX weighs about 800 pounds less. I also like that this GX has an old school naturally aspirated V8 in it, and that's necessary because of the high curb weight. Anything less than a V8 is probably somewhat unusable. For people looking to off-road their vehicles, torque figures is king, and a big displacement engine like this 4.6 liter V8 will do. The budget version of this SUV, the Toyota 4Runner, which if you're interested in my review, you can find that in the link up here, that only comes with a V6. Just imagine if Toyota puts this V8 engine into that 4Runner, which they kind of did in the 2000s, the sales figures would go through the roof. Unfortunately, this V8 only makes 301 horsepower and 329 pound-feet of torque. And I think the main culprit for those low figures is because this engine does not have direct injection. That's where fuel is directly injected into the combustion chambers so that you have a cleaner and more thorough burn. Direct injection engines have better efficiency, more horsepower, and more torque. And Toyota and Lexus, they have direct injected engines. Why that technology isn't found here is really disappointing. Attached to that engine is this six-speed automatic transmission, which is totally fine for something that you can buy in 2010, but by today's standards of seven, eight, 10-speed automatic transmissions, this really feels outdated. As a result of that engine and this transmission and also the heavy weight, the miles per gallon of the Lexus GX is terrible. In fact, it's one of the worst for luxury midsize SUVs at 15 city and 19 highway. 
And here's where you have the dilemma of old versus new. On the one hand, you have tried and true technology that works, is reliable, may not be the most modern. And on the other hand, you have a design that's more modern, that makes life easier, better, and more efficient, but comes at a price of unreliability and also uncertainty. This Lexus GX feels exactly like the car that you would have bought back in 2010. There's a lot of things that feel antiquated in here that newer cars just do a lot better because they've had more than a decade's worth of time to see what works, to engineer something that's more user-friendly and more up-to-date. The biggest offender in here is the infotainment system, and I sound like a broken record because anytime I review a Lexus, I always have something bad to say about the infotainment. And the problem here is that this one doesn't even offer Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Now, those smartphone integration tools is almost a standard for new cars that if you don't have one, it's almost like selling a car with roll-up windows. It's strictly unacceptable for something that you buy in 2021. On top of that, the screen quality and the user interface also looks outdated. The one positive thing I can say about this infotainment though is that it might be the easiest system to use in Lexus's entire lineup. And that's mainly because it's just a touchscreen, whereas the other Lexus models would have some sort of a clumsy touchpad or a trackpad, which can be very annoying to use. The next thing that feels outdated in here is the rest of the interior design. If you're at a Lexus dealership, you should really sit inside the other Lexus cars and see how their interiors have changed. The Lexus LS, LC, ES, and UX has that modern look and feel that when you sit down, you'll immediately feel like you're in a luxury car. Meanwhile, in the GX, while the leather seats and other materials feel great and has that Lexus gray DNA and quality, it doesn't feel luxurious because it looks outdated. Cargo space is another big bummer in this SUV because there's only 11.6 cubic feet of space behind the third row. And that grows to only 64.7 cubic feet with both rows folded down. I do like the fact that the rear hatch has a window that can pop open independently of the door, but I am not a big fan of this side swinging rear door. This will be a big problem if you have to parallel park in cities because this door has a large swept volume. The door also opens up to the right hand side, which means that if you're parallel parked, you have to walk around to the street side if you want to load anything. Given that we drive on the right hand side of the road, this door should really swing the other way for better access. There is one occasion where a side swinging door is great, and that's if you have a roof rack, you can just step on the ledge and get access that way. You can't do that from the rear if you have a traditional hatch that opens to the top. Overall, I think this door design creates more problems than it solves. Please let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. So outdated design and weird door aside, how does this Lexus GX drives? I think given the truck-like foundation, the GX drives really well. Driving this SUV, you can tell that you're driving a Lexus. The ride quality is great. It's not jarring or fatigue inducing. The steering feel is good and takes very low effort. There's also very good road visibility because of the tall ride height. The naturally aspirated V8 is also decent despite it not looking impressive on paper. And I like the grunt and the exhaust noise when you really push it. Other non-body on frame SUVs will drive better than this. Now, unibody SUVs are generally lighter and stiffer so that they will handle better and they will have better mileage. The handling of the GX is what you can expect for an SUV that's riding on a truck platform. Great for off-roading, good for daily driving, and for performance driving, no comment. So I think the GX is a bargain, at least at the base trim, which starts at $53,000. And it can do a lot of what other luxury vehicles can't at this price range. If you opt for the top of the line model with all the bells and whistles, like the adaptive variable suspension and 360 degree camera, you can cross over $70,000. That's not quite a bargain, but it's still cheaper than the direct competition. If you wanna have a luxury SUV that you can take through a rocky off-road trail, you'd have to spend a lot more money. Think of Lexus LX570 or Mercedes-Benz G-Class type of money. There is a lot of hardware in the GX that warrants that price. And on top of that, you also have this luxury skin that drapes over the entire interior of this SUV. If you don't need luxury, you can go cheaper by going with the Toyota 4Runner. You won't get that great V8, but you'll get a more modern feeling and looking SUV that will also be a rugged off-roader. 
If you want to see that review, make sure you go into the description box and check out the links to our other reviews. Well, there you have it. If you've learned something from this video, please consider hitting that like, subscribe, and notification buttons so that you can be notified anytime we make a new video. I'll wrap it up right there. My name is Hanson. This has been the 2021 Lexus GX460, and I'll see you next time.